thinking about the future of work, particularly in the realm of uh, digital work, knowledge work and the gig economy. So, you know, the gig economy, this is things, uh, you know, it's basically piecemeal work. So you're not a regular employee. Instead, you log on to a platform and you go get a job and you get paid for doing that job. We've been looking at Amazon Mechanical Turk for a number of years, uh, but thinking about how people, how, how the people who work on these platforms, how they manage their work days, and then also how people like researchers use these platforms as well. To, and so the starting point, of course, is to ask, do you get good data, right? So we, we you know, I remember being back here at the psychology department in Cardiff and people were running those types of studies, like saying, if we run an online study, do we get as good data as we ran it in the lab? And we've demonstrated that over and over again. Yes, it's good data. But I think what we've started to do next is to start looking at and delving into how people spend their time on these platforms. So I'm super excited to say that we just had this paper accepted at Tukai. Um, sometimes it's like putting track in front of the rushing train. And it reports two studies that kind of look at and talk to people who work on these platforms full time. So these are people that spend a lot of time working on IMT. It's their main source of income. They're working 40 hours or hope to work full time 40 hours a week on these platforms. The first study is a time of use diary study again, where we ask people, what do you plan to do this week? And they tell us, basically, I want to work Monday to Friday, nine to five. Uh, the, the short story is that that wasn't always possible. They might have wanted to do that, but work wasn't always available. So they ended up having to stretch their hours to accommodate the lack of work. So they ended up working into meal times into the evening because that's that's when the work was available. In the second study, we did a kind of deep dive into just 90 minutes of what actually was happening during these work periods. And that's what I want to tell you about just briefly. So the first thing to know is in these 90 minutes, even these 90 minutes of peak work, there still wasn't very much work to, being done. Um, so maybe that's not too dissimilar to a typical office environment. You know, this, we often get interrupted quite a lot and do other things. Uh, but what's really troubling, of course, for these people who work on these kind of gig economy platforms is they're not getting paid for this. So they are notionally like at work, but they're only getting really paid for a third of their time. And the other two thirds of their time is basically just being, you know, wasted or being being spent on either waiting for work or doing uh, admin that's required of these platforms, but which they are not being paid for. So it's free free labor, essentially. So that seems kind of troubling. Um, and then we can kind of dig into a little bit about how people are spending their time in navigating different application windows. So I was already saying we wanted to try and get people to be focused on one window. And this kind of work followed on from that and to start to understand why it is that people on these platforms are inherently multitasking all the time. And the reality is because they're, they're constantly looking for the next hit. It's a bit like the taxi driver who has the kind of multiple phones lined up. It's certainly quite common in London where they've got multiple platforms and they're looking for like, what's the best gig that's going to give me the best opportunity next? Um, so there's lots of tools that are being used here to find high value work to make sure they can grab it quickly. And then that leads to all sorts of peculiarities and behavior. So you might be working on a task and get halfway through it and then boom, you get told, here's a much better gig. It's going to pay you twice as much, but you've got to do it right now. And so I use our poor worker here is then constantly left with this choice. Do I just abandon what I'm working on? Do I put it on hold? Take this new thing. So they have to grab these things quickly. Um, so they might do that, then work on the next high value task. They work on it quickly. But and this is the thing that these are this is why I find HDI so interesting is that it's looking at things which are designed and built. So, again, coming back to this idea that designers or programmers make choices. And so the choice that's being made here is to put timeout features in these things. You must complete this task within 60 minutes of it being started or else it's no good. And so this kind of puts our poor participant who's basically trying to navigate across multiple activities here into an impossible position where they have to choose between stuff. And we had many instances where people would get basically to the end of a task. They've done all this work, but it then times out and it's like, mm, sorry, you lost. Right. So it's very unfortunate. And so I think, you know, as we move to a situation where more and more work is going to be online and maybe remote these kind of design choices in the platforms have a big impact on how people adjust their behavior. So yeah, definitely encourage you to dive into the paper if you're kind of interested. Uh, and with that, uh, thank you very much.